What's up, YouTube family? This is your boy again and my beautiful wife, Kanika Evans. We're excited uh, to come to you today because we're talking about when two households collide. Listen, they have collided her household, her past, my household, uh, my past, and we're going to talk about that today. Let's get into it. Okay, listen. Okay, I'm excited to be here again with my beautiful wife. Um, we talked about last time, if you didn't go see the last episode, go look at the last episode where we talked about our history, history and how histories matter. When you marry the person, you don't just marry the person, you marry the history, and now they collide in one household. Yep. And so we've got all of these expectations. Based on what I saw my mom do, that's what I wanted uh, her to do. Based on what she had in her household and how she did things in her household. And so there's a lot of things. Uh, you know, who pays the bills? I mean, who cooks, who cleans? Yep. Who mows the lawn? <laughs> I mean, there's so many All of things. It. Yeah, it's a lot. There's so many things that, that collide and really those things are the, the things that really can make or break marriages mm -hmm. because you collide with a ton of expectations. And I feel like in like premarital counseling, you may go through a book and it says, okay, who's going to do this and who's going to do that? So you're like picking out these things. Oh, we got this. We, we already picked who's going to do the laundry and we picked who's going to go grocery shopping. But then you get in the house and there's all these things that are not on the list. And you're like, Tons of stuff not on the list. We didn't even talk about that. We didn't even talk about that. But what we've learned how to do is flow because there's a lot of flow. Now, especially we have five kids. So we're not even, at the beginning, we talked about the list. Who's in it? Now we got five kids, like, whose hands are free? Yes. It don't matter, it don't matter <laughs> who it is. And I think one of the things that I had to learn is, is learning my wife, getting rid of those expectations based on what my mom and dad did. They had to build that for them. So they had to build that system for them and it worked for them. But I can't take my past system and put it in this present context. And and because it may be a round peg in a square hole. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times couples do that. They put a round peg in a square hole because they're they're taking their past and they're jamming it into their yeah. present and trying to make it fit. And driving the other person crazy. They're driving like, the other person crazy. I can't even operate like that. So totally different person yeah. um, than what you had. And so you got to really put yourself in a learner's position. And one of the things that I've learned, you can speak on what you've learned, but one of the things that I've learned as a man, you know, in Genesis 2, where it says that, you know, Eve was Adam's suitable helpmate. Number one, that means he needed help. So the worst thing that I could do as a man is think that I don't need help. And men do that because we have that ego thing. We're like, no, nah, I got it. I'm good. I don't need help. But Eve was brought to Adam to be his essential collaborator yeah. because he needed help. So that means in order for Eve to flourish, in order for Kanika to flourish, I have to be willing to let her use her gifts, which means I need to know what her gifts are. And then when she brings those gifts to the table, you know, I'm good. Yeah. You, you, you do what you do. Kanika is organized. Um, Kanika, you know, thinks through things a little bit further. <laughs> than, than I do. I'm running. Um, she's organized. She's more detailed. Uh, um, she's she's just thoughtful on a grand scale of how this affects this, this affects this, that decision's here, but it affects this, this, and this. And you didn't think about that. that and, th and I'm sitting there going, okay, I just want to, just want to get going. Can we get, can we get going? But now that I'm, you know, really getting better at allowing her to just use her gifts, I see how much greater it has cultivated our garden. Mm -hmm. And a lot of men um, think that their manhood and their leadership has to do with how much help they don't need. And not realizing that your leadership has a lot to do with recognizing the help that you do need and recognizing her gifts and skills and allowing them to flourish. I think a lot of it too can be a confusion on what submission means. So, yeah. you know, people are reading the Bible and it says, wives submit to your husbands. And, and even husbands are saying, well, my wife is supposed to submit to me, but what does submission mean? It doesn't mean that you just make all the decisions on your own without any input from your wife, you know? So I think yeah. that sometimes people get that confused, like what submission means versus what does leadership mean? Exactly. And I think to speak into that, um, because that's a, a big thing when it comes to bringing your past and trying to jam it into your present and you're trying to make it work, is that you're not really willing to submit to the process 
of what God wants to do in your current context, in your marriage, in your family, in your kids, and in your future. And so I think that the, in submission, we have to understand leadership as men. Leadership has to do with leading like Christ. So if you're leading like Christ, that means you're a servant. If you're leading like Christ, that means you're willing to suffer. Um, if you're leading like Christ, that means you're willing to give the greatest sacrifice. Um, if you're leading like Christ, that means that you're leading not in the domineering way because that's not how he led. So, and, and, and a lot of men, we see leadership from a football perspective. You know what I mean? Like I'm going to go make a hole, hit it, you know, just all of these different things. So we just see it that way. But leading like Christ helps us understand, you know, even the reason why we follow him because we are the church. We're the wife. Um, Christ is the husband. So that type of leader who sacrificed, served, and suffered, and sanctified all the S's, you know, I'm preaching and all that kind of stuff. Okay, but now we're like, our gratitude, um, we're willing to follow, he's the man. It's easy for the wife being the church, it's easy for us to say, oh, he's the man. Yeah, I'm, I'm following him. Um, what did he say? What is his word? You know what I mean? Because. He has, it's obvious that he has our best interest in mind and that he wants us to flourish based on his sacrifice. Okay, so. Yeah, yeah. I agree. <laughs> you agree. Because so, I, I feel like it's easier to follow when, when I feel like my ideas are heard and even sometimes they're the ones that are put into action. That's right. But if you're coming to someone and you feel like you have all these ideas and, and your partner is like, nope, we're not doing that. Uh, okay, we're not doing that. Then if, then you feel like, you're not a part. It's, yeah, it's, a, a it's oppressive. Yeah. It's oppressive. It's like working at a job where you have a manager who's micromanaging, doesn't want to hear your ideas. Only his or her ideas get to flow. Mm -hmm. You're just there. You're just an executor, yeah. but you don't get to speak into the enterprise. Right. You know what I mean? And so there is an op oppressive nature to that type of leadership. And it's also misunderstanding that, you know, in the Bible, God says in Genesis, he says, let them rule. He never said, let him rule. Mm -hmm. Okay. He said, let them rule. So a lot of our gardens as men are collapsing because we're not letting the them rule. We think it's the him. And so it's gotta be that way. Um, and so I think those roles are important when we take our past and we're trying to say, no, this is the way it's going to be. This is the way it's going to go. But even the woman can do that too. Yeah. You know, so women can come in and have all these expectations they put on a man. Um, and that, that could be a plethora of things, whether it's knight in shining armor, he's just gonna be able to do all these things. He's gonna be handy. You know, yeah. I, I had to grow into that. You did, but you're, you're doing so well. <laughs> I but at first, I was like, <laughs> call the plumber, <laughs> call, I'm, I'm not doing that. But there was the expectation of just like, you're the man, you should be able to get this done. Um, but I also feel like there's a flip side to that. There's the side of, because there are so many um, people growing up in, you know, um, in single parent households, then you have mostly that are run by women, I would say primarily. Primarily. So then you may have a woman that comes in and she doesn't know how to accept the leadership from the husband, um, or she just doesn't know how to operate in it. She doesn't so know how to let him. a strong woman doing everything, you know, then she doesn't know, okay, what does it look like for a woman to move into a different position? Mm -hmm. And even a man growing up in a single parent household, maybe you, they, if they saw their mom leading all the time, it might be hard for them to step up to the role of being the leader. Yeah. Yeah. I think that, I think that's a great point. I think that women ought to be able to see a lot of women who come from that context where they're like strong women, they, they've had to get it done and they've watched their mom have to get it done. So they come into the marriage like, I got to get it done. And the husband's like, well, what am I here for? Yeah. You know what I mean? You know, as the man, it's emasculating right. when you're, when you're, you're bringing that past in and you're, you're fitting it in. Mm -hmm. Um, I got to do it. I got to do it. You may not do it. You may not, you know, so, but there's a lot of rest that a woman should have in marriage. Jesus says, come to me, all ye who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Mm -hmm. And the man is in the Christ position, the wife is in the church position. And so if the man is doing what he's supposed to do, uh, providing, protecting, cultivating, um, anywhere he goes, things should get better. He's seeking her welfare. Um, he's loving, sacrificing, all of those different things. Then it ought to be a place where she's active, where she's flourishing, but she can also rest. Yeah. And a lot of women don't get rest 
not because the man's not willing, but because they're taking their past of the strong woman complex that they've had to have mm -hmm. uh, for so many years, and they're taking that, um, you know, that square peg and trying to, trying to, trying to jam it in. And so he feels like like the woman could feel unused. He feels devalued yeah. and unused in the same way. So there, there's so many things, and you may be sitting here listening to this thing, and that's exactly, you know, on either way what I'm going through. And there may be other, there's a ton of things yeah. uh, that I'm sure in your uh, marriage that you're thinking, man, there's there's so many things that I'm putting in that my mom did or that my dad did, and it's not working. If you feel that strain to where it's just like, man, this is not working, this is not working. Maybe it's because it wasn't meant to work. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's because it wasn't meant to work for your marriage, even though it worked for your dad and mom, or your mom or your dad. And so you wanna be prayerful about that, thoughtful about that, because I believe that once you understand how your past impacts you, but also things that need to be taken out and not brought in, then your marriage can really flourish. Okay, anything else? I think that's it. <laughs> Sorry, I'm there. Yeah. No, it's fine. All right, listen, <laughs> be steadfast, unmovable, always abound in the work of the Lord and know that it will not go in vain. Like, share, subscribe, ring the bell. You know somebody needs to hear this and we can just grow together. That's what we want to do. Leave in the comments. Yeah. Yeah, in the comments. Let us know your thoughts, what you're dealing with so we can grow together. All right, till next time.